What is life made of? Or, to make it more personal, what are we made of? Here is one answer. <sighs> and in case you're wondering, all those ingredients can be bought on a child's allowance. Humans can be built on the cheap. There's no magic to it. This clip is set in a fictional world where science could construct any object simply by knowing what it was made of. While that world was fictional, the concept that life is made up of similar matter to non-living substances is true. There are 25 elements which are essential to life as we know it. But the elements that make up life are also used to make non-living matter as well. When we look at the mass of the human body broken up by element, we see that only four elements make up 96% of the mass of the human body. Those elements are oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen, along with calcium and phosphorus also contributing a percent or more each. Keep in mind this chart is looking at contributions to mass and not number of atoms. There are actually far more hydrogen atoms than there are oxygen atoms, but an oxygen atom is about 16 times heavier than a hydrogen atom. We have learned that atoms have different atomic numbers and different mass numbers. Now, if we compare this to something that is not living, such as Coca-Cola, we see many of these same elements in the ingredients. While the exact recipe is not known to the general public, the list of ingredients on the can are carbonated water, which is H2O plus CO2, high fructose corn syrup, C6H12O6, phosphoric acid, H3PO4, caffeine, C8H10N4O2, and natural flavors and caramel color, which are also likely made of molecules of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen as well. Living and non-living substances can be made out of the same elements. So it is not the matter that makes up life that is special, but it is the organization of that matter that gives life its distinct properties compared to non-living substances. All living organisms are made of cells. And cells are collections of millions of macromolecules, all functioning together to perform the work of life. Macromolecules are enormous molecules that are made by linking smaller organic molecules into long chains called polymers. The term for these individual units is monomers. Macromolecules can be made up of millions of monomers linked together into a single molecule. I said that these are organic molecules. When we hear the word organic in relation to produce or livestock, we think of things that have been grown naturally without artificial pesticides or hormones. But that is not the way we use this term in biochemistry. Organic molecules are those molecules which have atoms of the element carbon and hydrogen covalently bonded to each other. All of the macromolecules that make up the cells are organic molecules. These macromolecules are found in four different categories, carbohydrates, nucleic acids, proteins, and lipids. You may have heard of these molecules in relation to human nutrition and the food that we eat. And the reason for that is because these are the molecules that make up cells. And most of the food that we eat comes from organisms that were alive, whether we're talking about plant or animal material. All of these molecules are based on the element carbon. Why is this element so important? What makes carbon so special? Well, each atom of carbon is able to form four covalent bonds. And these bonds can be with other atoms of carbon or a variety of other molecules and atoms. In biochemistry, in fact, in all of biology, we learn that shape determines function. Carbon-based molecules can form a wide variety of shapes, and this in turn allows them to perform a wide variety of functions, which are necessary for these molecules of life we will be talking about the different categories of macromolecules in lecture. But I would like to spend some time talking about how cells build up and break down macromolecules. Each type of macromolecule has its own type of building blocks or monomers. These monomers can be linked together with covalent bonds through a chemical reaction known as a dehydration synthesis reaction. In this reaction, 
no atoms are created or destroyed, but old covalent bonds are broken down and new covalent bonds are formed between the atoms. The reactants, the substances that were present before the chemical reaction, have the same number of atoms as the products, the substances that are present after the chemical reaction. The only difference is that the atoms are now arranged into new molecules. During the dehydration synthesis reactions, two monomers are linked together with a covalent bond, and a molecule of water is produced by combining hydrogen and oxygen atoms from the monomers. By arranging these building blocks in varying orders, the chemical properties and shapes of the polymers may be very different, thereby allowing these polymers to have very different functions. Cells are not only able to build monomers into polymers, but they also have to be able to break down polymers into their individual building blocks. They do this by using a chemical reaction called hydrolysis. In hydrolysis, a molecule of water and a polymer are the reactants in the reaction. The water and polymer are broken apart, and the result is smaller molecules. The polymer is broken down into monomers. These two reactions are how cells build up and break down their polymers. Remember, it is not the elements that cause life to be different from non-living substances. It is the organization of that matter. Now, let's try a few concept questions to see if you understood some of the main topics of this presentation. You will be able to answer these questions for credit on the course webpage. Which of the following would be considered an organic molecule? H2O, CO2, C6H12O6, all of the above, or only B and C. Living organisms are made out of elements that are not found in non-living substances. True or false? The products of a hydrolysis reaction will be larger molecules than the polymer reactant, smaller molecules than the polymer reactant, organized into the same molecules as the reactants.